Hey, it's Mark Pedosa, the Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have almost all usual suspects. We've got the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno, Mike, how are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Good to see you. You too. We've got your partner in crime, the nightcap OG, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are things? Things are great. Happy to be here. Great. Great. How How's the, the weather in Alaska? Uh, it's uh, snowing today. Of course it is. Okay. Are so, you in negatives? I mean, no. It was 50 degrees, though, two days ago. So, I mean, that brought out the, the shorts and tank tops here in Wisconsin. So, I know Scott Todd would have his park on in Florida, but it was, it was nice. Me, me and every other Floridian. That's right. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Taria putting in the reps Harris. Tria, good to see you. How are things? Things are well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Awesome. Eric, the technician, Peterson. Sands, there's just no rib in his mouth if you're not watching the video. So, Hello. How's it good going? See you, Eric. Last good but not you. least, you know him. You love him. The brain. The professor. Your fights go Sherpa. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. Landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything investor ninjas.com scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you i'm great today's podcast is sponsored by flight school learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life start building that passive income without renters rehabs renovations or rodents go up the mountain of land investing with scott todd as your sherpa who's done it thousands of times go up there quickly safely efficiently oh yeah that flight school tuition ain't gonna cost you nothing guaranteed just show us your work. You're going to make it all back 180 days or less. Schedule a call. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, we've got a good uh, topic today. All right. What is it? Well, I think we should throw it over to the Zen master because it's kind of like in his wheelhouse. All right. Let's go. And I, then- what, What's our topic today? I thought I remember the word. It could be contentious. That's what it could be. That's it's probably gonna be, the right It's going to get a little contentious. On that this was the word I was searching for when we were talking about topics. So, um, land arb is a really cool way to uh, control an asset and uh, and to make some money. Then we have wholesale. But if we are land arbing or wholesaling to another investor, should we or should we not charge dock fees? Now we may have covered the at one podcast, maybe a little bit about the wholesale, uh, but we haven't really talked about the land arb and there could be amongst the group here, some uh, change of thought, change of heart on the matter. So I thought that uh, that would be a great topic to, to uh, discuss. Yeah. I think it's a great topic, but before we even go into the topic, uh, Tria, do you want to just quickly break down for everybody what land arbitrage is? We call it land arb for short, but it's a land arbitrage strategy or model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So land arb uh, allows us as investors to, uh, like Mike kind of mentioned, take possession of a property without paying full price for it or not paying at one time for it. So land arb allows me, let's say I want to land arb from Scott Todd. Um, Scott Todd would allow me the ability to market the property and even sell the property for a small monthly note. So I would pay Scott Todd, let's say $100 a month. Um, I would then turn around, market the property, sell the property, and hopefully I can charge, you know, 150 or $200. That way I cover what I'm paying Scott Todd, as well as I get to keep a percentage of the profit as well. So I get to kind of behave as though the property is mine, although I'm paying monthly towards paying it off. Okay. I love it. Excellent. Excellent uh, explanation. So Scott Todd, I know that this is something that you're passionate about. And you even said before we started, you wanted to go first. What are your thoughts about charging a dock fee for land arbitrage, land arb, or even wholesale? Okay. The answer, and this is going to make for a very short podcast, the answer is no and no. Book closed. Game over. Why would we? Why? Okay, look. Okay, I'll expand on it. Wholesale. You know, the thing about wholesale properties is, you know, 
again, the, the doc fee component of the wholesale property is you're selling it at a discount to somebody else. You've, you've made your cash, you move on with life and you go. Tacking on another fee to it, it, it just makes it so that that person's gonna have a harder time to, um, you're getting the quick sale and they're gonna get the, probably the, the most likely the, the, the slower sale and for more money, that's no problem. But essentially, if you wanted to say, hey, listen, I'll, I'll sell it to you for this price and you pay for your own recording, I'll give you a notarized deed and you record it, no problem. That, that's cool with me. I just wouldn't charge a doc fee on it. And I think the same thing applies on the, on the land arb, right? Like the land arb, uh, you're, you're making money through the passive income component of it. Why put a doc fee to it? But I can, I can see on a, doc, uh, on a land arb having a doc fee. I, I understand it because it is, at, after all, it is a terms transaction and- you know, I don't know that it's definitely, I'm not going to say it's wrong either way, however you want to do it, wholesale or land arm. I just don't do it in my business. And so if I don't do it in my business, then that's the definitive answer in my mind. I don't know. So I'd like to well, know what Zeno has to say about it. I think Zeno should go last because he's like the, yeah, he should have like yeah I'm the, good with that. The definitive I'm good with that. sort of answer. I think I was slightly it. attacked right there. I don't know. I'm feeling a little nervous. <laughs> I, I think I hear someone call my name. I might have to step out. There's a fire somewhere. <laughs> That's right, Scott Todd. Do you send Mike Zeno Pepto Bismol like a like a monthly thing? Because he gets nervous easily, and, and no, you're the one no, making him nervous. No. no, okay. It's like subscribe and save. It's each month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, buddy, Nightcap OG. What are your thoughts? Doc fee, no doc fee, land arb wholesale. Uh, you may be surprised, but I agree with Scott Todd. Uh, these are these are quick sales. There's 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 very little work in these deals. There are really no marketing costs. And you know when we sell retail or sell on terms, typically there are some marketing costs with those. We like to use the doc fee to recoup comes recoup some of those costs. Um, so uh, to me, you know, uh, we do not charge doc fees uh, for these. Uh, I want the person I'm selling to, to be able to make a good return. So they come back to me in the future, learn that from Mike Zeno. Um, and so anyway, that, that's where I'm at. And uh, how, how about a no collection fee on geek pay? Right. Cause it's right. on a land arb deal. Do you, do you charge the nine bucks a month or 12 bucks a month? So I cut it in half. I usually do 10. Uh, I've done five. For my buddies like Matt Forbes, I, I, you know, I did him a favor and didn't charge him a monthly note fee because he cried about it. Um, so, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's flexible, right? Yeah, I heard. Uh, I mean, what's Chris, five bucks or ten bucks? Come on. Yeah, yeah, I heard Chris Voss speak uh, at a at a conference, and uh, if you guys don't know who Chris Voss, is he's he's the author of Never Split the Difference. He was an FBI profiler and negotiator, and um, you know his 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 saying was uh, the greasy, the greasy, the squeaky wheel doesn't get the grease. The squeaky wheel gets replaced. <laughs> so, so Forbes, if you're listening, that strategy is not going to work with everybody. <laughs> um, uh. Taria put in the reps, Harris to fee or not to fee. That is the okay. question. So in all fairness, <laughs> We attended flight school and we were taught in flight school that we did not. You don't charge um, the doc fee or, or even the monthly uh, note fees when you're dealing with other land investors. For us, we, we did not charge. We've done a lot of wholesale. We never charged the doc fee. Again, it was mostly because that we taught, we thought that's just kind of the general rule of thumb uh, for our environment but i typically don't mind charging if my sales manager is involved and she has to be paid for that sale so if it's a wholesale and my sales manager did not have to be involved then i'm okay with not charging uh the doc fee because most of my doc fees go to help recoup my costs for paying her okay so so far tria i'm seeing a trend here scott todd <laughs> For land arb and wholesale will not charge doc fee. Not only will he not charge doc fee, he will teach everybody else not to charge doc fee that goes to flight school. Scott Bossman, 
Scott surprisingly, Todd tried to note service fee. We didn't hear that. Oh, uh, oh wait, I wait, look, you, on you a land charge arb, a note service? On a land arb, yeah, I charge a note service fee. You know why? Because it's no different than any other terms transaction, and I have to pay people to do the accounting work on it. And that's what the note service fee does is it helps cover the cost or defray the cost of the accounting team who's got to do all the work. And the, the tools, right? Like GeekPay is not free. I'm sorry, Mark, but you're not giving it away for free. Someone's got to pay for it. it but yeah, that's that being said, it. that being said, is the only software, and I defy you to find me a different software, another software that actually makes you money after two notes. Right. Makes no, you I'm not saying that it doesn't. I'm just saying, well, I mean, like, but the thing is, is like, if I, if I charge the, the, okay, what about this one, Zeno? I mean, I guess Zeno or whoever, <laughs> oh, what about the 3% credit card fee? Do you tack that on a geek, uh, on a land arb deal? I don't do that either. I'm just taking notes till it's my turn. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Prove us wrong. But to just summarize now, Taria is a no. Bossman is a no. Scott Todd is not even a, like a no. He's like an emphatic no and no. So guess who just jumped on? I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate I Litchfield. Told the topic. <laughs> Tate, how are you? Good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I want to plead the fifth on this one. I'm not sure what's going on here. It sounds heated. <laughs> it sounds like frenemies are being made. And uh, see you guys. Let freedom ring. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tate, we're throwing you in right into the fray. All right. All right. For a land arbitrage deal, wholesale deal, will you charge a dock fee? No, we don't. Why not? Uh, I mean, I see why people would want to charge a dock fee. It makes sense because documents are still being created. However, when if I you do use it, the LG pass, it, what is it like that one button that, ouch, that really hurt. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, one, that one second really but Mark, was taxing. my time, my time. What's my hourly rate, right? Like I can see why people want to charge a doc fee. I don't, I don't do it. Um, and one of the reasons I don't is because it's a way for me to hopefully help somebody else get uh, ahead in the land business. That's kind of my perspective on the land arb method. It's not very profitable. Like it's not profitable in the long run. So I think you got to be careful who you're working with. I think you need to be careful if you're buying properties at the right rate. And it's, it's very profitable if you're on the receiving end of things where you're making a monthly payment of $100 and you're turning around and selling it for $200. Your yield on that is spectacular. But if you go out and you buy properties specifically for uh, the purpose of land arbing them to other people, you're probably not going to be able to do that very long. So you need to target properties in areas where people are making money. And uh, yeah, you need to uh, take all these things into consideration. Um, but I don't charge a doc fee. I do charge a note collection fee because as Scott said, there's still resources and people and personnel that go into making sure that your note uh, gets entered in correctly and is managed and uh, taxes and all of that. So there, there's, that's kind of not an option. Okay. Okay. So to recap, it's all no's, but should we just go to the irascible Eric Peterson? Sure. Eric, the technician, what is your take on charging a dock fee on land, ARB, and wholesale? Look, um, I've sold both wholesale and land, ARB. Um, every wholesale deal I've done, I've never charged a dock fee. I don't think that's right. I think that um, it's a very simple transaction. It's a very fast transaction, very little paperwork involved, etc. No need for a dock fee. Uh, land arb, I've done some of that as well. I have never charged a dock fee for it. However, um, I kind of understand the rationale for it. Um, I think that we do charge a, a note collection fee and we charge for taxes on a land arb deal. So there's already additional fees in there. But 
I could see where the argument would come from that you might want to charge a small dock fee for a land arb deal, maybe $100, $150. And yeah, you know, LG Pass does create those documents, but there's still work that has to be done to make that happen, right? Um, there's the creation of the note in GeekPay, and then of course the management piece of that, but that's that's kind of what that note collection fee is for. But um, it's that initial upfront work where I could I could understand the rationale for it. I, I admit I've never charged it, but I do, I see where someone would might maybe want to do that. Now, if someone wanted $250 for that, I think that's out of line. If it's 100 to $150, I think that's acceptable in my mind. Okay. Though I haven't done it. You have done. I mean, so basically, you're saying like, I, you know, you can see why someone do it. Like, I could see right. why why Russia wants to invade Ukraine. Would I do it? <laughs> no. Right, because probably not the right thing to do for the world. Right, peace is nice. It's just a a, a, w a better way to behave among. Homo Heavy hand off to me. Talk right. about world war well, than handing it well, off is, to me. Is Mike the equivalent of Russia in this? Example? I know I, what a handoff. I, I mean, <laughs> just because I can oh. see why. I'm just saying, you know, you can you can have empathy for anyone's <laughs> position. It could, you know, that's a, but you might not support it because it might not be the. I right I can be convinced to the overall to charge a dock fee for land arm. We'll say that. How's I'm that? about to do that. All right. Okay, okay. over to Vladimir. <laughs> Vladimir, Mike, Zen Master, Zeno. Oh, Why on earth would you charge a dock fee on land oh, arm no. or wholesale? What no, is the rationale? So no dock fee on wholesale. On land arm, I think it's a simple mathematical equation, Mark. Think about okay. it. Dock fee, dock fee plus purchase price equals good deal or bad deal. It's as simple as that. If you factor in the dock fee and what the purchase price is and on the monthly payment, if it factors into a good deal and people are going to make a ton of money, then I think it's fine. So I, I do a reduced $99 dock fee on the, uh, on the uh, land arm. And uh, it's still a good deal. People are making a lot of money. I'll tell you what, democracy may reign here because Taria is actually shaking your head and saying, not, not such a bad deal, Taria. I, I agree. Like I, I can see the rationale behind charging it because there's some work that needs to be done. So I agree. A reduced amount. I also feel that you, 250 Korea. is a lot to ask when we know that, you know, behind the scenes, you did just click a couple buttons and get the deed done. So, and the investor knows that. <laughs> Who, Eric, you want to join? Nah. Eric already said I, you. He, oh, so Eric that, that, uh, yeah. that it's a, a fair thing to ask so so eric and Tria can can see why you would do it and they don't down think it's reasonable. Yeah. but how about your your partner in crime the nightcap og um i'm, I'm not i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna charge the the doc fee just yeah. that's how i want to be treated i mean next thing we know mike's gonna start pulling out the whole yeah, but you can't default on this one too. I mean, jeez. <laughs> I feel like Scott Pod might have secretly printed Scott Do you have a late fee? Do you have a late fee on your land arm, Mike? What's your late fee? Fifty bucks. Uh, <laughs> Two hundred. He's making up for that. Doc <laughs> <laughs> I have a very good relationship Ouch. with the investors. I've had no late fees. I've had no late payments. But that is a good question. What yeah, is your doc fee, or what is your late fee now? Is it, yeah. does it change? Because mine doesn't. No, I have not modified the documents to change that, but I've never had to administer it though. Yeah. Yeah, if you're using GeekPay, you shouldn't have to, right? Right. Right. I mean, never, no one's ever suffered it, I should say. Right. Right. I got, okay. So I got to ask Eric Peterson about late fees because that guy's always at the forefront of it. He told me a while ago my late fees were too low. And, so that's that's a conversation we got to have off off camera because uh, maybe maybe I need to adjust maybe I need to go up a little bit. Well, let's just like ask Eric. That. You know, point blank, what are you charging for a late fee? Fifty bucks. 
nice. low. I mean, I, I don't think that's a bad late fee. Price I mean, went up. Inflation. <laughs> Convince me. And you should never be late. You just shouldn't be late, right? Um, for sure. Okay, so let's just take a look at the scorecard, scorecard now. Eric and Tria don't charge a doc fee, but they might be persuaded to now after Mike's very rational argument. Scott Bossman, surprisingly, is still holding his <laughs> ground and saying no. Breton. Tate, right. you're you're and you're holding your ground and still saying no, you will not charge a doc fee on a land and arm deal to break the tie. I, I have one last comment on the on the subject. Okay. So typically in a land arb, let's say it's a hundred dollars a month for however many months, right? Typically you would your deposit or your your payment to start the deal would be that hundred dollars a month. Right. But if you're charging a doc fee, well then it might be one ninety nine. But what if you're not charging a doc fee, but you're charging $200 down and then $100 a month. Is it essentially the same thing? Because if someone defaults, they don't get their money back anyways, right? Tomato, tomato. Yeah. It's the same deal. It's kind just of how you deal. frame it. It's phraseology. I, I mean, Tate, do you want to jump in on this one? Uh, I mean, yeah, phraseology. I, I, I think you look at it and some properties do deem a higher down payment just because they're more expensive, right? And and that's okay. Um, I, look, people, at the end of the day, it's a personal decision. If you're okay paying a down pay, a larger down payment or a doc fee, have at it. What do I care? I don't, right? Like, <laughs> you do you, man. Like, I I honestly could care less what you do, but run the numbers, know your numbers. And if the deal makes sense, have at it because land arb has proven time and time again to be a very, very lucrative way to control a lot of inventory without having to lay out a ton of cash. That's what it comes down to. That's why uh, it's even around because early on we realized that the one in one out approach of this business does not work. You have to have inventory. You can't sell something you don't own. And if you want to sell six properties a week, you got to have more than two in inventory. That's it. Well, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I don't know if anybody else had a visceral reaction to his apathy like I did, but uh, you know, we, we could talk about that off camera. <laughs> I've had a rough day. Okay, man. And I'll all tell right. you why off camera. <laughs> all, all right. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it. Not look. You're entitled to a rough day. Not a problem. Yeah. Um, Scott Todd, do you want to break the tie here? Do you want to have the look? I, I would just say I'm going to stick to my number, stick to my my original plan, and um, as Tate said, you do what you want to do in your business. I think it comes down to the the type of like what the person wants to do. If the person's doing a land arb deal and they don't mind paying Mike's ninety nine dollars, great, they're going to pay it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's it's up to the individual person. Mike, Mike said something that's, that's, um, that's, that's key. And it reminds me of something my dad told me a long time ago. And he mentioned like getting a good deal, run the numbers. If you think you got a good deal. And I remember asking my dad, when I bought my first car, I'm like, dad, do you think this is a good price on the car? And he said, do you think it's a good price on the car? And I said, I think it's a great price on the car. And he's like, at the end of the day, that's all that matters is if you're happy with the transaction, then it's good, right? Because you're the one, you're the one that has to be happy with the transaction. And so if you're dealing with Mike and he wants to charge a $99 doc fee for a land arb deal, and you think it's a good deal and you're you're okay with it, cool. Um, if someone wants to charge you $250, I mean, I would tell you not to do it, not to do that deal or to negotiate it, maybe negotiate it back down to the Zeno price, $99 or whatever, right? I, I can just tell you what I do in my business and that's what you get here is you get everybody telling you what they're gonna do in their business. And just to kind of close this out a little bit, just remember every retail store that you ever go into, they all have different return policies. I bought something from Nordstrom's. I held on to it for like 60 days and I'm like, oh man, they're probably not gonna take it back. 
They took it back, right? And on the back of it says that their policy is on a case by case basis. That's what their policy says. Now, if I were to take that back to, I don't know, Penny's or the outlet mall, they might tell me, sorry, you had 30 days. That's the way it is. So every store in the world operates on its own policies. Every company operates on its own policies. And it's the same thing with each of our businesses is they all operate on our own policies, pricing and everything else. So get a good deal. That's all I got to say. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tate's clapping for that answer. That is the definitive answer, Scott Todd. And it reminds me, we should put this on the calendar for our next round table. I think it'd be interesting to go around and hear the best advice you've ever received from your father. Like we, you know, then, then on Mother's Day, we'll, we'll do the mothers because like there's, there's, you know, that, that mom wisdom is always sort of trumps the dad's wisdom as we all know. But let's give dads that dad, dad wisdom a little love. You know, I think I heard James Taylor talk about it on a podcast. Uh, for all the dads out there, he, he made a comment that there's like very few times in, in a life where a dad has to step up and show up and like be there for their kid and, you know, give that fatherly wisdom. And that's like all you have to do as a dad is like just show up in those crucial times. And um, I thought, boy, that's a really low bar. I can handle that. It, was, it kind of made me, I slept really well that night. <laughs> I tell you. Thank you, James Taylor. Mike Zano, how are you feeling? Feeling great. You just brought some nostalgia bringing up that idea of talking about your parents. So I thought that was really cool. And um, I thought it was a great topic. And uh, I loved how Scott Todd rounded it out at the end. So I'm good. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank the listeners and remind them that the only way we're going to get Taria Harris to give us the tip of the week this week is if you do us three favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. Taria, put in the reps, Harris. What is your tip of the week? So the tip of the week today is actually, it's, it's a tool. Um, the website is called break cold, break C O L D.com. And what this does, it actually sends out automated emails as icebreakers to your buyers list. It uses AI to go in and generate these quick little icebreakers. Allegedly it's supposed to get you better responses, but not only will it send out emails, it'll also like send icebreakers on your LinkedIn um, if you're in that kind of industry. So it's a really cool tool. It's free for the first seven days. So I recommend you take advantage of that trial. And if you like it, looks like it's there's a special going on where you can pay $25 instead of $49. But it pretty much will just generate these system emails and send them out to your buyers list using artificial intelligence. Yeah, I could see this being used for people on Facebook actually, you know, marketplace or, uh, you know, the, the, the groups and whatever, and they want to automate it. You know, it's, it's a lot of work to, to keep up with those responses. And sometimes if you, you know, if you can automate those responses, you'll save some time and kind of yep. filter through the tire kickers more quickly. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting. I mean, you know, has anyone ever sold a property on, on LinkedIn? I don't I think you've not. even advertised on LinkedIn. I don't, yeah, I've put nothing on LinkedIn. It's not really the, the place to go, but I know, I know, you know, being on LinkedIn that I get those, those auto, auto responses all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, do you respond to them? Are they like good icebreakers that make capture I, your attention and make you want to respond? Some are good. I don't really respond to them because um, I'm, that's just me. Right. But I, some of them are, are good enough. Yeah, absolutely. I I, th I think a good, I'll tell you what a good marketing strategy would be that would get my attention on LinkedIn is if you did a little did a little bit of digging and, and didn't lie about it and actually went to like a Scott Todd, right? You got into Scott somehow. And you're like, hey, I work with Scott. Um, he thought that, I could help solve the same problem that you might be having. And that I would actually, oh, wait, you know, Scott Todd. Oh, 
you, I might respond to that. But if it's totally cold and there's no introduction, mm -hmm. you're, you've never worked with anybody that I know, so, right. so to speak. I, I like those kinds of, I think those are, are more effective. It's like, um, but there's some sort of connection. There's some kind of connection just, there where it's yeah. like, oh, you know, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I still want to verify I can trust you, but I'm more likely to respond to that. I don't know. Don't, Kate, don't, cool. don't, 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 don't come to Scott. Go to Tate and Phil. <laughs> don't go to me. I'm not, hey, I don't even know if I have, I don't even know if I have one. Okay. Here, here's the deal. If you want to get to Mark, you got to go to, you got to start off with uh, Zeno. Then you got to go to Bossman. Then you got to get to Eric Peterson. Then you got to get to Taria, Tate, me, and then maybe, so you, you got along with it. That's the strategy you should use on LinkedIn, everybody that's listening to this podcast. No, I mean, my, my ego has become so fragile now. I'd like to think that you have to go through six people to get to me. Mark, you know what it reminds me of? Because like I'm on the I'm on the billions bandwagon right now. Like we're binge watching billions, and um, I'm get, I got to the point where a relevant character is now uh, like um, he's like the the go to guy for whatever you need, and he's like running all around town. This one episode, he's like running all around town, like trying to make deals happen. Right? You need this, you need that, you need that, and then he's connecting all the dots together. That's what they need is they need to figure out who who all needs what. Give me a park anywhere past in the city and I'll get you right to Mark. All right. Yeah. I, I love it. Um, such a great show. You're, you're really late to the party on that billions thing. I'm, I'm yeah. caught up. Better late than never, man. Wait, wait till you see the Paul Giamatti transformation in the last season. Oh boy. I won't spoil it for you. Should I spoil it? No, do no. not. I'm hanging up now. All right, fine. I'm not, not, no, not, not anything with the show. Just his, just never mind. All right. Are we, are we ready to do this? Are we good? I was good when I got on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that topic was so, <laughs> was so compelling. <laughs> it was like, I walked into a hostile environment. It's like, whoa, what, what, what did I miss? What happened in, to set this conversation up? It was like, we are divided. Choose your side. <laughs> there is a right answer. Half of you won't return. It was like, oh man. All right. First time Scott Bossman didn't support me. Sounds like we need a little couples therapy. It's personal. <laughs> you should take that. Per that's personal, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say that the two of you need to get together with your sweatsitos. And work it out. But it has to be with the sweatsito. And I have to do two more nightcaps to get my sweatsito. Is that all I have to do? Right. And Tariya's working away into one now. Tari so it's Tariya's two away? No, I'm on this week. You're, oh, you're on this week. Oh, okay. So after this week, then you'll be two away. Wow, be cameos two away. count. You just got to pop on. A cameo will count. I'll, I'll jump on. You guys have to remind me. Just fox me. All right. I'll Great. jump on. I want that sweatsito. If you guys aren't We're watching Nightcap, send one to Scott way, check out because Nightcap. we love him. Not no no appearance is needed. <laughs> Wait, I gotta work for mine now? I, I, so yeah, the, see, okay, so the just, rest of oh, yeah, so, so oh jeez. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. Only say that because I know he doesn't want it. <laughs> wow. Oh. I want to receive a free sweatsito in the mail. Jeez. Maybe yeah. that's a way to a man's heart right there. Seriously. Oh. Unbelievable. All right. Are we ready to do this? <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Thanks, everybody. So, Tate, what's it like being back in the desert after Maui? Ah, uh, you know... It's always good to come home, right? Uh, but it's a little bit difficult to leave that place. It's a, it's a good place to relax and unwind. I was telling my wife, you know, this might, Hawaii is probably the best place to be a kid, right? Like you get up, you're running around, expectations are low, you swim, you play in the ocean and you laugh and you can be loud and people don't care because it's, you know, the beach all day. So we had a great time. 
uh, pretty awesome food, you know, fished a little bit. So all in all, an A plus vacation for me. That's awesome. I, I read somewhere that if God went on vacation, he'd go to Maui. There's truth to that. I'm sure it, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those places where I rarely go back to the same place twice on vacation, but I find myself there more frequently than anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what I think is the most enjoyable piece of, of going to Maui for me now is that Scott Todd hasn't been there. Mm. Yeah. And just knowing that I'm experiencing something that Scott hasn't. And, and knowing that he can't fly there either on his own, that, that brings a little bit of joy to me does, too. Right? Oh, oh, he has to at, fly commercial like the rest of us, you know, exactly. that's, that's not that's true. That's not true. That, it is true because you told me you'd true. end up, you told me you'd end up on the back of a coast card. That's, that's via, true vessel. on my plane, but that doesn't mean I have to fly commercial. I could fly private if I wanted to. There's a thing on net jets or something like that, right? Like there's options. So, yeah. okay. So you're, you're saying that you've, you have now retired from, may I see your boarding pass? I, if I wanted to, I didn't, I don't have to, right? If I wanted to, I could jump on our probably, I could probably jump. I could I, look, I bet I could jump on our last guest plane that Tate missed that podcast. He doesn't even know who our last guest was. He missed the guy. He missed the friendship. He missed the jet that we're all going to be on. Right. Tate's not on that jet. Look, he'll want me there. He does not want you there because you didn't even show up to his podcast. You don't even know who he is. But I we did. We were, I forgot we were meeting today. <laughs> see, see, he's on Hawaiian. He's on Hawaiian time. On Hawaiian time. I no. totally spaced it. I was like, I looked at my Can we watch tell and him I was, who was like, here? Yeah, tell me who was here. No, we can't tell him. We're still recording. We're going to ruin the, the surprise for the audience. But this one comes out after. Right. No, no, I don't think what so. What do you mean, no? Uh, because it's, when it's a guest, it might be in the guest queue. Oh. That's lame. Put him in the real queue. Okay, hang up and let's tell Tate. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.